Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV for you. Today, we are talking to Bradford Cook, the uh, co-founder and CEO of Endeavor Silver. Yeah, one of the uh, yeah, primary and large uh, gold, uh, silver gold producers in the world. And we want to get his view on the markets after this, uh, yeah, I would call it panic selling mode we had when cash is king all of a sudden. And uh, a lot of people were probably a little bit irritated um, about the fact that they thought gold and silver should rise first, uh, which it did not. And maybe now gold started first to rise and we want to have the opinion of Bradford here with us. Brad, thank you very much. It's early in the morning with you in Vancouver. Thanks for taking the time. And yeah, what's your view on the panic selling here? <laughs> Hello, Jochen. And uh, yes, thanks for uh, asking me on to comment on gold and silver. You know, I had a number of shareholders in recent weeks asking what's wrong with gold and silver. They're going down. I thought they were hedges. They're supposed to go up. But history says that in a market panic, uh, there's a rush to cash and everything gets sold. Mm -hmm. That is the history of market panics. So there was no surprise that gold and silver got sold. <clears throat> However, when the panic subsides, uh, gold and silver invariably, particularly gold, uh, uh, are the first sectors to attract cash, to bounce back. Uh, why? Because gold is nothing more than a monetary metal uh, throughout history. It has played a, a role as a, a safe haven, as a uh, uh, protection of your capital, uh, protection against the basement of currencies, fiat currencies. And we're coming into that phase very quickly here post crash. Mm -hmm. And so you've already seen, like last week, I commented that gold bouncing around 1500 looked like it was trying to find the bottom. This week, just in the last two days, we've seen a fantastic bounce in gold. It blew through all of the resistance uh, stops and has now uh, officially recorded yesterday a breakout. Uh, it broke up to, I think, it closed yesterday at 1635 US. Today it's trading off just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And having, having held uh, the $1,600 handle, I, I think we have a clear shot on gold now to 1880. So mm -hmm. gold is doing what it's supposed to do and it's the first sector to respond after a crash. Absolutely. And it's highly liquid and uh, really interesting, um, of course. And as I call gold, also the insurance for my wealth. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So um, silver, yeah, was really hammered down. Would you rate this uh, due to the fact that silver is for approximately, I think it is 51 or 53 percent, is it is industrial use, right? And uh, maybe even a little bit more. And is that one of the, the reasons because of the shutdown we see now worldwide economically? Well, again, in the last hundred years, the history of silver and gold is that gold moves first and silver follows. Gold is a larger market. Silver is a smaller, more volatile market. So mm -hmm. silver typically lags behind any gold move and then it catches up with a slingshot. Mm -hmm. um, that is still true today, mm -hmm. except that the business of silver has continued to evolve towards the industrial applications. And the investor has not yet rediscovered silver as a monetary metal in this cycle. It's too soon for the investors to come to silver. So unlike gold, which had a breakout yesterday, silver has not broken out. And even though it had a great day yesterday, uh, and it's bounced $2 in basically two days off of its bottom, um, and the ratio, which peaked at 124, is yeah. uh, yesterday 113. Uh, and I think it'll, it'll come back to 106 before any resistance. Uh, my comment on silver is that we just have to be patient. Uh, it, we know it likes gold. Uh, it doesn't have a breakout yet. But as it moves up through the $15 and $16 range, those are the breakout points for mm -hmm. silver. And then you've got a clear run to 19 bucks. So I would just be patient. I can't tell you when that should happen. Obviously, we're in the lag period now. And uh, ultimately, we know, we know for sure that uh, history... Uh, demands, silver will play catch up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, also, how would you rate, uh, I think it was last night, Goldman Sachs told their 1,500 top clients, now is the time to buy gold funny enough. And then we saw this morning, I got this uh, from one of my bankers. Uh, I got a note that uh, ABN AMRO is shutting down the physical accounts and you have to sell. Otherwise, you will be executed by 1st April. I mean, those are 
this is for me like also a panic reaction from the bank. I've, I don't know the background, of course. Yeah? <laughs> so uh, we, we don't know what is really behind. But uh, if, I, if I read stuff like that, um, are we entering maybe a new phase in the precious metals? Because to me, it was um, always when I spoke with investors also at the, the fair in Stuttgart, for example, where you have been with me several times and also in Munich. Sometimes you heard people, they were saying, oh, yes, yes, I bought gold. I bought a mini future long. I said, congratulations, you have the bank against you. And uh, the other guys told me then, yeah, I have bought an ETF somewhere, wherever. Yeah. And um, so now it looks to me a little bit like Xetra Gold and Euwax, by the way, in Germany, they have problems to deliver the gold uh, due to whatever technical reasons. I have no idea what it is, but uh, if I want my gold, I want to have it and I don't want to hear any excuses. So are we entering maybe a new phase now in physical gold, let's say trading also silver and maybe also investment going away from comics, away from paper gold, away from paper silver. Listen, my kids are asking me about gold for the first time ever. Absolutely, we're coming into a new phase. And this is very, very early in the new phase where there's a, going to be a, a re rediscovery of gold as a, a, a safe haven and, and as a, uh, an investment that holds its value against fiat currencies. Absolutely. Um, I, th I think that uh, the monetary system is going to be challenged here. I think with the U.S. government already proposing a 10% increase in money supply, 10% increase in government debt, uh, and that's the first phase of their, uh, their bailout to this current uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, there's only one direction the U.S. dollar can go. Right now, it has had a huge run. The U.S. dollar actually peaked yesterday. It's a double peak going back to 2017. U.S. dollar index peaked at 103. That's pulled back from that peak. Might go back there, might retest it. But there's only really one direction the U.S. dollar can go from here, and that's down. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Um, how do you rate, let's say, living in uh, Canada? As, as I'm in Switzerland now, and we are already probably two, three weeks in front of you. Um, how is it going there? Uh, do you see also people starting to buy physical gold and silver? Um, is the Royal Mint like uh, working 24 hours? So what's going on there? <laughs> well, we've seen a rush to the gold ETF because it's, it's easy, it's liquid. Uh, you can get in and out of it. And, and uh, really the people who are deploying cash now are only the, in, at least in America and Canada, the, the largest institutional investors uh, looking for a return on their cash. Uh, I don't think the retail crowd are going to come back until maybe the summertime, post-crisis. But then you're going to see a very significant and sustained demand for physical gold and physical silver. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, can you maybe give us also a bit of an idea here? Um, as you saw, Daimler has uh, shut down for two weeks, Volkswagen shut down for three weeks. Um, they're all in short work now. Um, but uh, what I see he here is like uh, we are just postponing the e-mobility, the hydrogen um, yeah, change of the systems here of transportation of, uh, um, of our normal daily mobility. And this requires, of course, a lot of silver solar panels require a lot of silver and uh, all, all high-tech applications, I would call it. Um, do you think, um, let's, or let's put it that way, let's assume the economic, um, um, the, how can I say it, the, the, the economic action comes back in May. Yeah. Um, do you see there are any problems of silver supply? Because now the refineries are not working, maybe some mines are shut down. Do you think this could have an implementation and an, an impact um, on the situation of the supply of silver? Because the demand is all of a sudden going through the roof and uh, maybe then therefore the, for the prices also. So let's talk about the big picture and then get to silver. The big picture in the markets was that this was very much a flash crash. I mean, it literally, um, I won't say it came out of nowhere, but it happened very quickly and, and hit every market. Uh, and I believe the recovery in the markets due to the stimulus and due to the fact that the coronavirus life cycle is only about two to two and a half months, um, means that the markets should actually rebound fairly quickly uh, coming into the summertime. However, the economy, not so much, because this has been a, a very sharp hit 
to the global economy, it's almost like chopping off a, a leg and an arm and then asking the economy to bounce back. Mm -hmm. So first the arm and the leg have to be stitched back on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think the Absolutely. economy will rebound more slowly and we are looking at recession, at least a two quarter recession. Yeah. Um, and, and really after that, it's, uh, it all comes down to the confidence of the consumer. If the governments can get the consumer to uh, get through the social distancing, get back to work, uh, get back to normal so that people feel confidence, that's when the economy will really get going again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but, and so for the usage of silver, um, what, what is your big picture there? I mean, we, we, we are building more solar uh, parks in the world. We are using more e-cars. Even, by the way, I'm driving a hybrid now. So I'm, I consume also <laughs> more silver than I did with my last car, of course. Yeah. And so what, what is your picture there? Uh, well, I think, again, we're gonna, we have seen a short, sharp uh, impact on silver demand. And we're seeing, uh, uh, following that, a uh, short, sharp impact on silver supply with mines shutting down, ports closing, refineries closing. Um, so uh, that's why we saw a crash in the silver price. And now we're seeing a bounce back in the silver price. I think silver will plateau for a while while gold continues to move. Mm -hmm. And then when the economy gets going, in other words, the gold's going to react to the market bounce back. Silver is going to react to the economic bounce back. And so mm -hmm. there's the lag. Yeah, fantastic. Where would you see in silver the real breakout level? Um, because I have in my charts, for example, 23. I know that's a high mark by now for several years. What is your personal feeling? Let's say uh, also if we are going back to the situation 2003, 2004, because I'm still a bit reminded on that when silver was like three, four dollars, I think. And all of a sudden it goes like bam, right? Yeah. So the, 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 the main pinch points, uh, very short term, we're talking about $15 resistance. Once we break that, we're talking about $16.5 resistance. Once we break that, then we're, we got a clear shot to 19. Uh, after that, it's 25 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Super, great. I see it exactly the same way, even higher. Honestly, my target if it breaks for 23 is 37. I know you like that. <laughs> we st we stop counting after 25 because all of the silver miners will be making a lot of money. That's right. And then that was silver also. Fantastic. That's a great final sentence. Redford, thank you very much uh, for this um, yeah, uh, situation update, I would call it. And uh, let's hope that uh, yeah, this COVID-19 thing will be over by end of April, beginning May. As said, you are a little bit behind us. Yeah? So we hope definitely for 19th April here in Switzerland already that we can restart the economy, which would be very good. And uh, yeah, all the best for you. Stay healthy. Most important thing. And thank you very much. And we talk soon. You bet. Thanks, Jochen. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Bradford Cook, the co-founder and CEO of Endeavor Silver, one of the primary silver producers, gold, uh, silver gold producers here in the world. And uh, yeah, you heard it. Uh, silver still has a way to go, but uh, it is sh hopefully it goes above the 15, 1650, and then probably the, the pass up to 25, as he said, is free. And honestly, with $25, the, sil the silver miners will make a lot of money. So probably a good idea to have a look at silver miners and especially also on the devil silver. Thank you very much and bye-bye from Switzerland.